reduction technique. Take a look. Circuit reduction technique is used. Of course, it says technique. So it's a technique used. Used for what? Circuit reduction technique is used to reduce complex resistor or capacitor arrangement. Complex resistor or capacitor arrangement diagrams to get an equivalent that to get an equivalent yeah so equivalent either equivalent resistor or equivalent capacitor but whichever way we want to get an equivalent it involves taking some resistors or capacitors in either series or parallel arrangement until an equivalent is found until an equivalent is found something just came to my mind what is equivalent what equivalent resistor what is equivalent capacitor huh? what is equivalent capacitor what is it how do you define an equivalent capacitor or an equivalent resistor? How do you, how do you define it? The idea of equivalent is, is likened to the idea of equivalent is likened to resultant in vector a singular um, resistor or capacitor that will have the same or their value as several other resistor or capacitor arranged in series or parallel that's it so an equivalent resistor or perhaps an equivalent capacitor is a singular resistor or a singular capacitor that will have the same effect as several other resistors or several other capacitors arranged in either series or parallel all right let's take an example Sample problem, take down. For a combination of capacitors shown below, for a combination of capacitors shown below, Um, yep, you have this. Please sketch, sketch. All right, pick up. Um, sample problem for a combination of capacitors as shown below. You have this. You say, calculate the equivalent capacitance of the combination and the charge on the 15 microfarad capacitor and the charge on the 15 microfarad capacitor on the 15 microfarad capacitor all right let's do this together please when it comes to doing um, circuit reduction i would, I would like to advise you use what's called a circuit reduction diagram. Listen up. Do you know what's called a circuit reduction diagram? I'll be drawing a series of diagrams simultaneously, step by step, depending on my approach to this question. If I'm given this, my first task will now be where exactly do I start from? Alright? Which of these ones are in series and which of these ones are in parallel? That's not the question. Um, before then, before then, observe the difference between this one here. In this one, we are not given C1, C2, C3, C4. So it's now left for you to define it yourself. So case one, I will say let C1. So call it whichever we want to start with. You can say this is C1, C2, C3, anyhow. For me, I'm just going to call this one C1. So solution is let C1 be equal to this C2. Be equal to this 
C3 is equal to this and C4 is equal to this. Z5, just follow. So as I said for you, it is left to you. Anyhow you want to call them, no problem. So let C1 be equal to this, C2 be equal to this, C3 be equal to this, C4 be equal to this. Which one do I start with is the question. You might identify which one start with? Which two are in series? Which one in parallel? Which one do I start with? C3 and C4. C3 and C4. So here's the idea. Here's the idea. These two here are in parallel series. In parallel. So I'll uh, add this to you now in parallel. It's giving an equivalent. The equivalent of C3 and C4 will be here. The equivalent of C3 and C4 will now be in series with what eh? C2. You now resolve this equivalent of C3 and C4 in series with C2. It will now give you another equivalent. This other equivalent now will now be what eh? Parallel to what eh? C1. This one is a simple example. Look at complex examples. Alright. Um, first is first. Take that place. Take that place. Listen, listen, listen. When it comes to drawing your circuit reduction diagram, you use arrow heads to show movement. So look up. That's how you start. Uh, depending on how the diagram, okay, of course. Um, they, will, they will expect you to reproduce the diagram. You have to reproduce. So reproduce this diagram, yeah? I'll be having this, look up, I'll be having this. Um, reproduce this. Now observe, this one is voltage. I won't have to use this one. I will have to reproduce just my um, capacitor diagram. So perhaps this, one, two, this, straight up like this, um, comes down. This one, one, two, okay. One, two. C1, 25, 25 microfarad, C2, 15 microfarad, C3, 10 microfarad, C4, 20 microfarad. Now listen, this is C3, this is C4, this is C1, this is C2. My first task is to resolve C3 and C4 in parallel. Listen. So I'm now saying, notice, notice that C3 and C4 are in parallel. Hence, they are equivalent. I will call the equivalent not C E Q but C5. Listen carefully. Notice C3 and C4 are in parallel. I will find the equivalent. In this case now, I won't call the equivalent C Q. I will call the equivalent C5. Why C5? Because C5 is not my total yet. It's only your final signal for the CEQ. So hence, for C3, for C3 and C4 in parallel, I have that C5. For parallel, I'm not adding speed, not looking in bus. What is the in bus? And it's straight. So C5 is equal to C3 plus C4. The equivalent of C3 and C4 is C5. So that's now equal to, it becomes 10 plus 20. That gives you 30 microfarad. C5, the equivalent of C3 and C4 in value is 30 microfarad. What's next? You now bring this one down, bring this one down, bring this down to this one. My diagram now becomes this. Here's my new diagram. It becomes this. Here, this one here, C1 is still untouched. So I'm having here a C1. Observe, I've reduced this three here, this two here, sorry, to C5. So I'll have just one value for it. 
Kind of causes, uh, let me explain this to start. So this becomes 
the value of the equivalent capacitance. That's it. So the, the idea to the idea of solving this term is just when do I start from and how do I move? That's it. And then for each step, for each step, reproduce the diagram. That's it. So we've got it equivalent. What was the next task? There's a question. Or what? Why the charge? Um, come to the left side. So come to the left side. Take this off. When it comes to finding the charge or the voltage, I'll now start going backward again. Try to solve this. Yeah. So it, it's a forward backward process. Right? We move forward to this point. Find the charge on the 15 micro. I want to play this. So I'll use the box. Take this off. Alright, so listen up. Listen up. The next task is to find the charge on this one in particular. This one here, my 15 microfarad capacitor. What do I do first? Uh, my first task will be to get your charge. Uh, recall, recall charge, charge on 15 microfarad capacitor. That's the task. Um, first is first, recall something. Recall that Q equal to CV. Uh, in this case, I'm using the equivalent. That means Q is equal to C equivalent times the voltage. So the charge Q is equal to, um, give me this value, what is the value? Huh? 35 becomes 35 times 10 to the power minus 6 into voltage 60. Please don't fight for your Connected to what there? 60 volts. So we have 
is 60 volts, yeah? 60 volt potential difference. I will say when capacitors are connected in parallel as this, their potential difference are the same. So, so since C6 and C1 are, are in parallel, their PD are the same. So it means that for this case, of course, for this case here, what's connected here is 60. So that means um, V6 is equal to what there? 60 volts and V1 is equal to what there? 60 volts. That's the idea. Alright? 60 volts is connected to both these and this. So it's the same thing that flows to both of them. Become 60 and 60. Bear in mind, hold on. Bear in mind, I will have to find the charge. I will have to find the charge in um, on 15 microfarad. So, listen. So, get, listen, listen. Here's the idea. 15 is in from here. Now, if I go backwards, I will get 15 under C6. Because C6 becomes 15 and this combined. So, if I have to find charge on 15, that means I don't even have to bother myself about C1. It has no, no connection with 15. My task now be, let me now get the charge on C6. Because of that, C6 is gotten from the combination of this and this in series. And if this and this are connected in series, you have one there, the same charge. So hence, that means the charge on C6 becomes one there, the same charge on this two. So my, my, my task now be, find the charge of one there, C6. That's right there. So ignore C1, go to C6 straight. To get charge, to get charge on C6, um, I will have that Q6, uh, I will get that, what do we again? Q is equal to CV. In that same way, Q6 is equal to what that? C6 times what? V6. So Q6 is equal to, what's C6? This. 10 micro multiplying V6. What's V6 there? 60 volts. Alright. So Q6 will now be equal to what do I get? What's my what do get? Six times 10 power what there? Minus 4 coulomb. Q6 equal to 6 times 10 to the power minus 4 for you. Final step. Final step. So I've gotten Q6. Look at that. I've gotten Q6. Q6 is the charge on C6. Now, here's the thing. C6. C6. Uh, I'm not writing. I'm just going straight. C6 was gotten by adding C2, which is the 15 out of the max of 5, and C5 in what there? Series. And if two capacitors are in series, we agree that because they were put it down, they have what there? The same charge. That means the charge on C6 is equal to what there? The same charge on these two. Alright, so therefore, therefore, since uh, okay, fine. To conserve space. Therefore, uh, I'll just write this back there. Therefore, since C6 was got, since C6 was got by combining C2, which is equal to 15 microfarad, and C5, which is equal to 30 microfarad in series. Then they have the same charge value. So it means that the charge on C6 is equal to the charge on C2, which is the 15 I'm have to find, and also equal to the charge on C5, which is 30. That's Q5. They are the same. Because we have got the same. So therefore, therefore, the charge Q. In the 15, uh, in the 15 microfarad capacitor, which is Q2, 
So Q2, therefore, is equal to 6 times 10 to the power minus 4 coulomb. This is saying that 0 by 6 times 10 to the power of that minus 3. This two are the same thing. We can say that is equal to 0 by 6. So minus 3 is what? Micro, micro coulomb. So 0 by 6 micro coulomb. Or don't worry.